Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 3, my name is Camel, and in this video we will be running through all of the unobtainable weapons in Fallout 3. Now an unobtainable weapon is a weapon that cannot be obtained via normal gameplay means. So there are bugs, there are glitches, there are console commands and there are mods which will allow you to obtain some of these weapons. However, because those methods are not normal or intended, that would render any weapons acquired via those methods unobtainable. Be sure to keep an eye out in the video, let me know your favourite weapon from this list of unobtainable weapons and also let me know the time of your favorite kill in this video. So let's get started. And for the first unobtainable weapon, we have the 10mm alloy steel pistol. With a damage of 9, a DPS of 54, an AP cost of 17, an item health of 150, a value of 225, a weight of 3, ammunition used is the 10mm round, ammunition per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 12. The 10mm alloy steel pistol is a cut version of the 10mm pistol from the Operation Anchorage DLC. It differs from the standard 10mm pistol in appearance only with this Operation Anchorage winterized reskin. Apart from that, it uses the same stats as the normal 10mm pistol. Next we have the Alloy Steel Assault Rifle, with a damage of 8, a DPS of 64, an AP cost of 23, an item health of 300, a value of 300, a weight of 7, the ammunition used is the 5.56mm round, ammunition per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 24. The Alloy Steel Assault Rifle can be found in the data files of the Operation Anchorage DLC. It uses the Operation Anchorage specific texture for the weapon, otherwise known as the winterized skin, but aside from the name and the appearance, it is identical to the standard assault rifle. It is likely that the weapon was intended to be placed in the armory with other wasteland versions of weapons found in the Operation Anchorage simulation, however most of which were cut from the final version of the game. Next we have Black Bart's Bane with a damage of 8, a DPS of 6, an AP cost of 28, an item health of 100, a value of 60, a weight of 2, the ammunition used is the BB, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 100. Black Bart's Bane is simply a cut item from the standard version of Fallout 3. However, this weapon's damage, critical damage, and item health are all double of that of a normal BB gun, and its value has been raised from 36 to 60 caps. In all other aspects, it is identical to the normal BB gun. And something interesting, its name is a reference to the classic film A Christmas Story. Ralphie, having just received his new Red Rider BB gun, takes aim at a target across the yard and murmurs, Okay Black Bart, now you get yours! For the next weapon we have Breaker with a damage of 12, a DPS of 17.1, an AP cost of 35, an item health of 150, a value of 30, a weight of 4, and the Breaker is a unique version of the nail board, however it cannot be found anywhere in game and was a cut item from the final version of Fallout 3. It differs from the standard nail board in that it does more damage, has a higher DPS and has more than double the durability of a standard nail board. It is okay that this was cut from the game however because there is a unique nail board in game called the Board of Education which is to statistically superior to the breaker. Next we have Butcher's 10mm pistol with a damage of 9, a DPS of 54, an AP cost of 18, an item health of 150, a value of 30, a weight of 2, ammunition used is the 10mm round, ammunition per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 12. And Butcher's 10mm pistol is carried by Butch Deloria after first being recruited by the Lone Wanderer after completing the Trouble on the Homefront quest. This gun is almost identical to the regular 10mm pistol with only minor differences to weight, value, and AP cost. It cannot be used or acquired by the Lone Wanderer because Butch keeps it to himself. What a dickhead! Oh, can't wait to say this name. Charon's Combat Knife. Now before you get your knickers in a twist about the pronunciation of this name, there's literally about 10 different ways to pronounce this name, so I'm going to go ahead and assume that Charon in Fallout 3, the male ghoul, is named after the ferryman of Hades in Greek mythology, which is pronounced Charon. So, Charon's Combat Knife with a damage of 7, a DPS of 21, an AP cost of 17, and a weight of 1. Charon's Combat Knife is used by Charon and has identical stats to the regular version of the Combat Knife and the exact same skin as well. And next up we have 
Shampoo out on shotgun with a damage of 55, a DPS of 41.3, an item health of 150, a value of 70, a weight of 10. Ammunition used is the shotgun shell, the ammunition per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 5. Compared to the normal shotgun, it has a lower damage per second due to the lower attack speed, lower critical damage, and less ammunition per reload. It also has minor changes to health, projectiles per shot, weight, value, and lacks any action points. It cannot be used by the Lone Wanderer. And if you still want to dispute Charon's name, I'll send you to the river sticks without a coin. For the next weapon, we have the higher damage Chinese Assault Rifle, with a damage of 1000, a DPS of 8000, an AP cost of 23, an item health of 400, a value of 500, a weight of 7. The ammunition used is the 5.56mm round, ammunition per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 24. Now the higher damage variant of the Chinese Assault Rifle can only be found in the game files of the Operation Anchorage DLC. And although being a weapon in the Operation Anchorage DLC files, it does not use the Operation Anchorage specific winterized skin, it uses the skin of the standard Chinese assault rifle from the standard Fallout 3. And as high as the DPS is, it is unfortunately not over 9,000. Quickly following, we have the Chinese Dragoon Assault Rifle. It has a damage of 11, a DPS of 88, an AP cost of 23, an item health of 400, a value of 500, a weight of 7. Ammunition uses the 5.56mm round, the ammunition per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 24. Now the Chinese Dragoon Assault Rifle can be found in the data files of the Operation Anchorage DLC. It uses the Operation Anchorage specific texture for the weapon, otherwise known as the winterized texture. However, aside from the name and the appearance, it is identical to the standard Chinese Assault Rifle. It is likely that this weapon was intended to be placed in the armory with other wasteland versions of weapons found in the Operation Anchorage simulation. However, once again, most of which were cut from the final version of the DLC, this being one of which. And dragging along behind, we have the mini version, the Chinese Dragoon Pistol. With a damage of 4, a DPS of 24, an AP cost of 17, an item health of 150, value of 190, a weight of 2. Ammunition used is the 10mm round, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 10. The Chinese Dragoon Pistol is a cut weapon from the Operation Anchorage DLC, apparently intended for use in the normal game after completion of the simulation, once again found in the armory. It has identical stats to the standard version of the Chinese Pistol, but has the same appearance as the simulation version using the the Operation Anchorage winterized texture, which does make this weapon quite a drag, Un. For this next weapon, we have Clover's Chinese Officer's Sword. It has a damage of 10, a DPS of 23.1, an AP cost of 28, at a weight of 3. Clover's Chinese Officer's Sword is a unique, non-playable version used by Clover, with identical stats to the regular version and also the identical skin. Clover's Chinese Officer's Sword is identical in stats to the regular version of the Chinese Officer's Sword, and it also uses the same skin. God. Cleaving its way through the list, we have Clover's Cleaver. With a damage of 15, a DPS of 34.6, an AP cost of 28, an item health of 500, a value of 100, and a weight of 3. Clover's Cleaver is a unique Chinese officer sword cut from the final release of Fallout 3. It has a higher damage and damage per second, but a critical chance of 0.5, lower than the normal Chinese officer sword. Judging by the name, it is assumed that this was meant to be used by Clover as her Chinese officer sword. However, it was cut from the final version of Fallout 3. Soaring through the list, we have Clover's Sword of Shotgun, with a damage of 50, a DPS of 112, an item health of 250, a value of 190, a weight of 5, ammunition used is the shotgun shell, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammo cap is 2. Clover's Sword of Shotgun is carried and used by Clover. It is her default ranged weapon. Apart from the name, it is identical in stats and identical in skin to the standard variant of the Sword of Shotgun. A relatively physically boring weapon, unlike its owner, eh? Coming through with a cold breeze, we have the Cryo Later. All of its stats are unknown. Its appearance resembles that of the in-game homemade weapons and it was intended as an energy weapons dependent homemade weapon. Several junk items possibly related to the Cryo Later were also cut. A coolant component which forms the midsection of the Cryo Later, a liquid nitrogen canister which was possibly intended as the ammunition. Both of these items use the same texture file as the Cryo Later. The Cryo Later and the possible components mentioned above do not exist in the game, nor 
nor do they exist in the unused items in the Gek editor. However, the meshes and textures for them and the weapon itself are contained within Fallout 3's BSA files. Or in short, it is basically an unfinished weapon. Swinging through the list, we have the Curse Breaker. With a damage of 13, a DPS of 18.6, an AP cost of 25, an item health of 600, a value of 75, and a weight of 3. The Curse Breaker is a unique variant of the baseball bat and was cut from Fallout 3. It deals more damage and has a better critical chance, 1.5, compared to the standard 1 of a common baseball bat. The perfect weapon for breaking curses, as long as the curse is your opponent's limbs. Charging through, we have the Discharge Hammer, with a damage of 25, a DPS of 35.7, an AP cost of 38, an item health of 750, a value of 180, a weight of 20. The Discharge Hammer is a weapon from the Fallout 3 DLC, Broken Steel, that exists in the game files but was never used in the game. The Discharge Hammer is a super sledge that also deals increased electrical damage to robots. Interestingly, previews for the Broken Steel DLC mentioned Super Mutant Overlords using a weapon called the Violator, but was never added to the released version. This weapon weapon may have been intended to be used as a strong replacement for the Super Sledge or a unique version. However, I suppose we'll never know unless we hammer the developers and make them discharge some information on this weapon. Next up we have the Electric Zap with a damage of 5, a DPS of 16, a value of 110 and a weight of 1. The ammunition used is the energy cell, ammo per shot is 1 and the ammo cap is 12. Now the Electric Zap is the laser weapon used by iBots. The Electric Zap is almost equal in strength to a laser pistol. It is extremely accurate and will rarely miss, even over considerably long distances. So be sure to keep an eye out for the iBots so you will be zapped, electrically. Pulling through the stone that is this list, we have Excalibat. With a damage of 13, a DPS of 18.6, an AP cost of 25, an item health of 600, a value of 75, and a weight of 3. Excalibat is a unique variant of the baseball bat, however, it was a cut item from the final release of Fallout 3. It is stronger than the standard baseball bat, providing more damage, a higher durability, and a greater critical multiplier and critical damage. Some behind the scenes info, Matt Wagner used the Legend of King Arthur as background for his modern retelling, Mage, in which Excalibat Excalibur takes the form of a glowing baseball bat. And secondly, in the 1995 RPG game, Rise of the Triad, the Excalibat is an enchanted baseball bat. Excalibat would be a fitting piece of equipment for the Kansas City Royals. Now, oh, next we have Fox's Gatling Laser with a damage of 9, a DPS of 135, an AP cost of 30, an item health of 1,500, a value of 600 at 11, a weight of 10. The ammunition used is the Electron Charge Pack, ammunition per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 60. Fox's Gatling Laser, believe it or not, is carried by Fox after starting the quest, The American Dream, and he cannot drop it, therefore you cannot obtain it. Although this weapon does do one additional point of damage per shot, it has a lower damage per second due to the lower attack speed. Sadly, it also only has a fourth of the ammunition capacity of a standard Gatling laser. Just to make you more depressed, it also has a critical multiplier of zero. To lift our spirits, it has a lower weight. However, to take us back down, it has a lower value. It is an emotional roller coaster of a weapon. Following through, we have Fox's Sledgehammer, with a damage of 32, a DPS of 51.2, an AP cost of 38, and a weight of 12. Now please, don't confuse this weapon with Fox's Super Sledge, this is Fox's Sledgehammer, which is carried and used by Fox. It is a unique, non-playable version of the Sledgehammer, it has the exact same skin and almost the exact same stats, however, it has a marginally higher attack speed. Blazing through, we have the Fire Hydrant, with a damage of 100, a DPS of 150, a weight of 300. And the Fire Hydrant can be found being used by Super Mutant Behemoths. It's only a wonder as to why you can't use this weapon in-game, as it only has a weight of 300 pounds. And as you can see, it's also unrealistically large, even for a Super Mutant Behemoth. However, there are only five Super Mutant Behemoths in the game, so witnessing a Fire Hydrant in use is actually quite rare. Yeah. <laughs> 
fisting its way through the list, we have fists. With a damage of zero, a DPS of zero, an AP cost of 18, an item health of two, a value of zero, and a weight of zero. Fists is cut content, and I don't think it was ever meant to be used in the actual game. With the fists equipped, the player character will never make contact with the target while swiping. No damage will be dealt, and their target will not turn hostile or otherwise react. They also lack a Pip-Boy icon and a world model, so they use the default icon and do not show up when equipped. The fists may be used in specific quest sequences that involves punching, however the player or NPCs can punch without any hostile reactions. But whether they're actually used in game at all is unknown. Next we have the beta version of the Gorse Rifle. With a damage of 23, a DPS of 47, an AP cost of 17, an item health of 1000, a value of 1000, and a weight of 8, the ammunition used is the Micro Fusion Cell, ammunition per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 5. The Gorse Rifle beta is a weapon cut from the Fallout 3 DLC Operation Anchorage. The beta version of the Gorse Rifle is a test version of the scoped Gorse Rifle that uses the model of a laser rifle and features a 5 round magazine. It only does about 25% of the damage of the final version but has a 100% knockdown chance. This beta version is especially interesting because when fired it shows the true trajectory of the Gorse Rifle's shot, whereas the official version of the weapon shows a misleading visual representation of the bullet trajectory. When firing the beta version, the round clearly fires up to the right of the center of the scope. For some reason, this off-center trajectory remained unchanged in the official version. However, the animation of the final Gorse Rifle was changed so it looked like the bullet was going straight. This led many players to confusing missed shots because visually the round appeared to be dead center despite the fact that the actual coded path for the round remains up and to the right. The beta version of the Gorse Rifle exposed the lies of the developers. Launching through, we have the Grenade Launcher. With a physical damage of 55 and then an explosive damage of 100, a DPS of 232.5, an AP cost of 27, an item health of 240, a value of 200, a weight of 7, the ammunition used is the shotgun shell, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammo cap is 3. The Grenade Launcher is a cut content weapon in the Broken Steel DLC from Fallout 3. The Grenade Launcher is listed in the GEC but was not placed in the game. It is a modified combat shotgun that shoots grenades instead of shotgun shells, although it does use shotgun shells as the ammunition. This weapon was created during one of Bethesda's tutorials on how to use the GEC and appears to have been left in the game. And it remains that the item only exists in the game files and cannot be attained without the use of PC console commands. However, because this weapon was so cool, the idea seemed to carry on and we do find actual in-game grenade launchers in Fallout New Vegas. Bravo as to whoever created this for the GEC demonstration. Next up we have Jericho's Chinese Assault Rifle with a damage of 11, a DPS of 77, an item health of 200, a value of 340, a weight of 7. Ammunition used is the 5.56mm round, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 24. Jericho's Chinese Assault Rifle is carried by Jericho and also used by Jericho as his default ranged weapon. It is largely identical to the regular Chinese Assault Rifle with a lower attack speed, a lower critical multiplier, lower critical damage, lower value, and the only good thing is it has a lower spread. Red. Next we have Jericho's Nail Board with a damage of 8, a DPS of 11, an AP cost of 27, a weight of 4, and Jericho's Nail Board is carried and used by Jericho as his default melee weapon. Jericho's Nail Board has the identical skin to the standard Nail Board and also has identical stats to the standard Nail Board, which does make it a truly boarding weapon. Haha, <laughs> nailed it. For the next weapon, we have the Katana. With a damage of 15, a DPS of 34.6, an AP cost of 19, an item health of 250, a value of 70, and a weight of 2. The Katana is a cut weapon from the Mothership Zeta DLC. It is believed that the Katana is a beta version of the Samurai Sword. With that said, please keep in mind that the Katana and the Samurai Sword are two different weapons. This one, the Katana, is unobtainable. When the Katana scores a critical hit, the target will fall to the ground, just like the knockdown effect of the Victory Rifle, the Gorse Rifle, and the Electro 
Nitro Suppressor. Because this weapon is thought to be a beta weapon, it cannot be found anywhere in game and is only obtainable via console commands. The katana is also considerably weaker than the obtainable samurai sword. It does 9 less damage, it does 19 less DPS, its critical damage is 1 tenth of the samurai sword, the crit multiplier is 1 compared to the samurai sword's 2, it is 1 pound lighter, it only has 1 quarter of the samurai sword's item health, and the katana also has 5 less value. So apart from the knockdown effect, the katana is a piece of shit. Taki mushrooms. Next up we have the demo version of the laser rifle, with a damage of 22, a DPS of 46, an AP cost of 17, an item health of 1000, a value of 1000, a weight of 8, ammunition used is the micro fusion cell, ammunition per shot is 1, and the ammunition cap is 24. The demo version of the laser rifle is a cut item from Fallout 3, and is presumably left over from the game's E3 demo. It does 1 point less damage per shot, and less than half the critical damage than the standard variant, but has a much higher critical chance percentage. It can also not be found anywhere in game. Well, this next weapon we have Lord Dog! With a damage of 9, a DPS of 27, an AP cost of 20, an item health of 150, value of 210, a weight of 2. Ammunition used is the 32 caliber rounds, the ammunition per shot is 1, and the ammo cap is 5. Lord Dog is a cut weapon from Fallout 3. It's a unique 32 caliber pistol with slightly increased damage and increased value. Although it is a light weapon, it pales against the 10mm pistol in terms of rate of fire. Not much is known about this weapon, why it was made, or where it was intended to appear. It either went to jail or to the pound. Blasting through the list, we have Liberty Laser, with a physical damage of 1000 and then an explosive damage of 200 on top of that, with a DPS of 4000, an item value of a measly 9,674,000. Ammunition used is the Micro Fusion Cell, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 255. The Liberty Laser is, of course, used by Liberty Prime. Liberty Prime can be encountered during the quests Take It Back, Death From Above, and Getting Ready for Prime Time. And once encountered, Liberty Prime can be witnessed using the Liberty laser shooting it from his eye. It is a huge light blue electrical laser beam that not only deals 4000 damage per second but also has an AoE radius of 128, destroying enemies around your target. A truly formidable weapon. And just a warning, don't shine the laser in your eye because it may cause blindness. Next we have Liberty Prime's Fat Man Nuke, with a physical damage of 200 and then an explosive damage of 550, with a DPS of 121, a value of 23,730, and this can of course be seen being used by Liberty Prime once again. Liberty Prime's Fat Man Nuke is a huge warhead-like weapon that is thrown like a grenade. During the throwing animation, it seems that a pin is pulled from the bottom of the nuclear warhead, just like a grenade. This weapon is best used in third-person view, as it is so big it can block your view in first person and also in close up third person. Liberty Prime's Fat Man Nuke in VATS has atrocious accuracy, often flying tens if not a hundred yards over the target. If the huge explosive damage of Liberty Prime's Fat Man Nuke is not enough, it also has an AOE radius of 1200 plus 2 rads per second for 12 seconds. It is a huge, brutal, unstoppable, relentlessly explosive, giant nuclear warhead that is thrown like a baseball. Flashing through, we have the Lightning Gun, with a damage of 77, a DPS of 77, an AP cost of 17, an item health of 1000, a value of 1000, a weight of 8. Ammunition used is the Micro Fusion Cell, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 24. The Lightning Gun is a unique variant of the laser rifle, but was cut from the Broken Steel DLC. If you do want to use the Lightning Gun in-game, just a warning, it's very unstable, and there is an incredibly high chance that it will crash your game. The Lightning Gun fires essentially a basic laser rifle's laser. At the point of impact, it generates a natural gas cloud. After a moment, a second laser flies in horizontally from a seemingly arbitrary location towards the gas cloud to ignite it. The burning of this natural gas created by the lightning gun also seems to have some kind of Greek fire effect that will leave a burning patch on the ground and if further ignited will explode and spread flaming hunks of gas that continue to burn across the area around you. A very dangerous and very unstable weapon.
for the next weapon, we have Love Tap with a damage of 8, a DPS of 12.6, an AP cost of 15, an item health of 100, a value of 20, and a weight of 1. Love Tap is a unique variant of the Brass Knuckles and is cut content from Fallout 3. Love Tap boasts a slightly higher damage than its common counterpart. It also has a critical multiplier of 2, opposed to the standard 1. It also deals more critical damage than the standard Brass Knuckles, and in addition, they also require 3 fewer action points per attack in VATS. Sadly, Love Tap is hindered by only having 100 item points, half as much as the regular Brass Knuckles. Love Tap will also deliver a Love Tap, which I have no interest in receiving. For the next weapon, we have the Myelok Bait Grenade with a damage of 0, an explosive damage of 0, DPS of 0, an AP cost of 0, an item health of 5, a value of 5, and a weight of 1. The Myelok Bait Grenade is a thrown weapon that was cut from Fallout 3. It is a special frag grenade which, based on the name, would have acted as bait to attract or lure away Myelokes. It is unimplemented and also does not work as Myelokes simply ignore them. It uses the frag grenade's world model and explosion effect but does 0 damage, though it still causes a concussive effect if the player stands too close to the explosion. The Myloke Bait Grenade was intended to be used during the quest Wasteland Survival Guide, when Moira Brown sends the player into the Anchorage Memorial. The Myloke Bait Grenade is also mentioned in the script for the Wasteland Survival Guide quest, and can only be found lurking in the Maya that is the Fallout 3 game files. For the next weapon, we have the Molotov Cocktail. All of its stats are unknown. According to the Gek, a Molotov was going to appear in the game. It was mentioned by Sierra Petrovita, and three records for it exist in the game files, but the weapon was never completed before being cut from the game. The model fire was referenced in the GEC, but the actual file does not exist. There is also a sound record in the GEC for the Molotov. The third record appears to be a throne type weapon, but the GEC does not recognize this record and cannot be opened. A model for the cocktail does exist and can be found in the Fallout 3 meshes. The cut throwing skill also references the weapon by name. There is also an unused skin of a Zippo lighter that was going to be used to light the Molotov cocktail. Hello there, it's a damn shame she never made it to the game. What? Going through, we have Mr. Gusty Plasma Gun with a damage of 60, a DPS of 199, a value of 7,200, and a weight of 1. The ammunition used is the energy cell, the ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 6. I know you won't believe me when I say it, but this is used by Mr. Gusty. The Mr. Gusty Plasma Gun is twice as powerful as the Plasma Rifle and almost three times as powerful as the Plasma Pistol, making it, of course, a much more dangerous weapon. So never underestimate the plasmic power of Mr. Gusty. Gusties. However, you won't see them using it too often as they default to their flamethrower weapon. Next up we have the Mr. Handy Buzzsaw, which sounds like the name of a Game Asus's special treatment. With a damage of 20, a DPS of 46, a value of 250, and a weight of 1. And of course, the Mr. Handy Buzzsaw is used by Mr. Handys. It's not exactly comparable to any other melee weapons, as there are no other Buzzsaw weapons. However, it does count as a one-handed melee weapon, and those damage stats are pretty damn good for a one-handed melee weapon. Next up we have the Mysterious Strangers 44 Magnum with a damage of 9,000 it's one off being over 9,000. With a DPS of 16,875, an item health of 1,000, a weight of 3. The ammunition used is the 44 Magnum round, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 6. The Mysterious Strangers 44 Magnum in Fallout 3 is visually identical to the 44 Magnum revolver, except for the front sight, which is slightly smaller, but deals an unstoppable 9,000 damage per shot, making it the most powerful weapon in the game of Fallout 3. It truly is as strangely mysterious as its owner. For the next weapon, we have the Nuka Cocktail with a damage of 1, an AP cost of 24, an item health of 5, a value of 50, and a weight of 0.5. This is a crafted item, and the ingredients used are a Nuka Cola Quantum, a tin can, a turpentine, and an Abraxo Cleaner. Now, the Nuka Cocktail is a weapon that was cut from Fallout 3. Using a bottle of a Nuka Cola Quantum and a rope with additional ingredients, it would create a gigantic explosion. This could have been a predecessor to the Nuka Grenade. It uses the same ingredients as the Nuka Grenade, except that there is 
was a Nuka Cola Quantum bottle rather than an empty Nuka Cola bottle. This item wasn't completely finished, and if you do add the item using its console commands, it will actually just add a standard Nuka grenade to your inventory. It truly is a cocktail of disappointment. Next up, we have O'Grady's Peacemaker. With a damage of 6, DPS of 13.8, an AP cost of 45, an item health of 400, a value of 100, a weight of 2. O'Grady's Peacemaker is a unique police baton that was cut from the final release of Fallout 3. There was to be a guard called O'Grady who would carry this weapon, but was cut from the final version of the game. Compared to the normal police baton, O'Grady's Peacemaker has a higher damage, a higher item health, a higher value, but costs more AP to use in VATS. This item's owner, O'Grady, was cut from the game. It is not known where he was meant to be placed or why he was cut. Next up we have Pars Fishing 8, and I guarantee if I did use this, I would still not be able to catch a damn thing. It has a damage of 80, a DPS of 180, an AP cost of 35, an item health of 300, a value of 350, a weight of 60, ammunition used is the shotgun shell, the ammunition per shot is 2, and the ammo cap is 2. Pars Fishing 8 is a unique version of the double-barreled shotgun added to Fallout 3 with the Point Lookout DLC, but was essentially cut in post-production. It looks identical to the regular version, the double-barreled shotgun, but differs in damage, price, and other characteristics. Pass Fishing Aid deals the same damage in a non-critical hit as the Terrible Shotgun, but has a much smaller ammunition capacity. Critical damage outside VATS, however, is much larger due to the larger number of pellets fired from this gun. And although it may not help me in fishing, it's so impressive in combat that it even blows your enemies off their feet. Next up we have the Radioactive Gore, with a physical damage of 1, but an explosive damage of 260, a DPS of 88, an AP cost of 24, and a weight of 1. The Radioactive Gore is used by Feral Ghoul Reavers, which were introduced in the Broken Steel DLC and the Point Lookout DLC. The Radioactive Gore is actually a piece of the Feral Ghoul Reavers flesh. They rip off own parts of their bodies and throw them. These chunks, the Radioactive Gore, have a deadly accuracy and explode like a grenade, and can easily cripple limbs. These chunks of radioactive gore also emit radiation. It's a gruesome, gorishly geigerish weapon. Next up, we have the SATCOM Nuclear Strike. With a physical damage of 20 and then an explosive damage of 1,600, a DPS of 435, an AP cost of 55, a weight of 20. The ammunition used is the missile, the ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 1. Now, the SATCOM Nuclear Strike can be seen in use at the SATCOM Array NW-05A. Inside this location, on the scientist's body, you will find three notes. The third holotape will activate High Water Trousers, which is an orbital micro-nuclear weapons platform, a satellite armed with nuclear missiles that can hit the targets on the ground. It will drop several small tactical nuclear missiles around the tower. So the SATCOM nuclear strike is, in fact, the nuclear weapon of a satellite. When fired, the missile has extremely fast speed and shows rocket-propelled thruster animation from the back of each missile. The rads effect in the center of the explosions is 30 plus rads a second. Once the missile hits an object, another sound effect will play. This is the wind sound effect from the explosion. I do believe that this weapon has the biggest explosion radius of any weapon in the game. It truly is a firework on steroids. For this next weapon, we have the Sentry Bot Gatling Laser with a damage of 6, a DPS of 60, a value of 1,070, a weight of 15. The ammunition used is the Electron Charge Pack, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 40. And this is used by the 100-year-old bots. Compared to the standard Gatling Laser, the Sentry Bot Gatling Laser is less powerful. It does 2 less damage per shot. It only has a DPS of 60 compared to the standard version's DPS of 160, and its ammunition capacity is only 40 compared to the standard Gatling Laser's 240. Although Although it is much weaker compared to the standard Gatling laser, it can still give you one hell of a tan. And launching through the list, we have the Sentry Bot Missile Launcher with a physical damage of 20 and an explosive damage of 150. DPS of 268.4, value of 4,300, a weight of 15. Ammunition used is the missile, the ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is also 1. The Sentry Bot Missile Launcher is used by the Sentry Bots. The damage stats of the Sentry Bot Missile Launcher are identical to that of the standard missile launcher, making the Sentry Bot Missile Launcher a ferocious weapon that you do not want to get in the way of. If you do run into a Sentry Bot, in the wastelands of Fallout 3, hopefully they will miss you.
For this next weapon, we have Shriek with a damage of 12, a DPS of 9, a weight of 1. Ammunition used is the Sonic Energy, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition cap is also 1. The Shriek weapon can be found being used by Myalurk Kings in Fallout 3. It is their Sonic Attack. When a target is hit by Shriek, their total health is reduced by 50 points and their personality is reduced by 10 points. Shriek also bypasses damage resistance and is particularly effective at crippling the target's head. So if a target is hit in the head with Shriek, it will pretty much kill them as it passes all armor and is ultra effective against heads. A truly creepy and Shriek worthy weapon. <laughs> Next up we have a weapon called Signal Flare with a damage of 1 and an explosive damage of 1, an AP cost of 24, an item health of 5, a value of 25 and a weight of 0.5. Signal Flare is a weapon which was cut from the final version of Fallout 3's DLC Operation Anchorage. The inventory image and world model are the same of that as a standard frag grenade. It is set to only be usable by the player, it deals almost no damage and has no script assigned to it. After it is thrown it simply disappears. So although it is usable, the Signal Flare is essentially an unfinished weapon that was rightfully so cut from the DLC of Operation Anchorage. Next up we have the Smoke Grenade with a damage of 1 and then an explosive damage of 100, an AP cost of 24, an item health of 5, a value of 25 and a weight of 0.5. The Smoke Grenade is an explosive thrown weapon that was cut from the Operation Anchorage DLC of Fallout 3. It shares the skin of a standard frag grenade. The similarities don't end there however, the Smoke Grenade has the exact same stats as the frag grenade. Why there's a renamed version of a frag grenade and why it wasn't put into the final version of the game? Nothing has been confirmed. Like a magician, it simply whoosh, vanished in a puff of smoke. Next we have Sonora Cruiser's 10mm pistol, with a damage of 100, a DPS of 600, an AP cost of 17, an item health of 150, a value of 43,559. A weight of 2 ammunition used is the 10mm round, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 12. And it is carried by Sonora Cruise. Now although this weapon deals a huge 100 damage and a whopping 600 DPS, it is actually never seen in use in game. A Sonora Cruise is programmed to always flee from enemies and she never uses her pistol in game. So although she's carrying it, it's never seen in use, which is sad. It also has an incredibly fast rate of fire. So combined with the huge damage and the super speed that it can fire at, it is an unstoppable force. Sadly, regardless of its rate of fire, it is not an automatic weapon, so you have to click every time to shoot. So if you do want to use this in-game, prepare to get surgery on your index finger. Next up we have the Spanner with a damage of 15, a DPS of 34.6, an AP cost of 19, an item health of 250, a value of 70, and a weight of 2. The Spanner is a cut weapon from the Fallout 3 DLC Mothership Zeta. The Spanner is a wrench with a value and weight higher than that of other wrenches. It is also equippable as a weapon and the only one of its kind. As it was cut from the game, it was left unfinished. It is held in a strange manner, or should I say, a strange Spanner? Yeah. It is held upside down against the player's arm. It will knock down enemies on critical hits, the same effect as your school teacher's breath. Although it is a cool weapon, there is nothing worse than a spanner in the camel works. The next shining star of a weapon, we have Star Paladin Crosses, laser pistol with a damage of 12, a DPS of 72, an AP cost of 17, a weight of 3. Ammunition used is the energy cell, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition cap is 30. Star Paladin Crosses laser pistol is carried and of course used by Star Paladin Cross as her default ranged weapon. It is both identical physically and identical in stats to the standard laser pistol. So yeah, pretty lame. And following up, we have Star Paladin Crosses Super Sledge with a damage of 25, a DPS of 35.7, an AP cost of 38, and a weight of 3. Star Paladin Crosses Super Sledge is once again carried and used by Star Paladin Cross as her default melee weapon. And although Star Paladin Cross carries a Super Sledge, melee weapons is not one of her tag skills. Star Paladin Crosses Super Sledge is physically identical to the standard Super Sledge and also identical in stats. Once again, a eh, pretty lame weapon. For the next weapon, we have the Swamp Folk Combat Knife, with a damage of 11, and it also does 35 damage when used by a non-player character against the player character. It has a DPS of 138, an AP cost of 17, an item health of 450, a value of 50, and a weight of 1. It can be found in-game being used by Swamp Folk. The Swamp Folk Combat Knife is physically identical to the standard Combat Knife, and has the same stats apart from this 35 damage bonus when used by a non-player character against the player. This bonus 35 damage ignores damage resistance, and 
is independent of the condition of the weapon. It can be seen in the Point Lookout DLC being used by Point Lookout's Swamp Folk. It's just one extra reason not to go into that damn creepy swamp. Next up we have the beta version of the Tesla Cannon. Has a physical damage of 20 and then plus 80 explosive damage and then plus 20 electrical damage per second for 2 seconds. Has a DPS of 157.9 plus the 20 electrical damage. An AP cost of 55, an item health of 100, a value of 500 and a weight of 20. Ammunition used is the missile. Ammo per shot is 1 and the ammunition cap is also 1. The Tesla Cannon beta is cut content from the Broken Steel DLC. It is aesthetically identical to the missile launcher and uses missiles as its ammunition source. However, it still fires the same blast of electricity as the normal Tesla cannon. It delivers less damage than the actual Tesla cannon and uses more AP per shot. Using the Tesla cannon beta, you can kill NPCs without calm loss using the splash damage of the shot. Also, like a normal missile launcher, the weapon dips when a shot is fired, so the beam actually hits lower than where it is aimed. And something rather interesting, Nikola Tesla really did try to create a directed energy weapon, but it would have been a particle beam weapon called a Teleforce. However, that did somewhat influence this Tesla cannon. Next up we have the test gun, which tested my patience because it kept crushing the goddamn game. With a damage of 9, a DPS of 54, an AP cost of 17, an item health of 150, a value of 225, and a weight of 3. The ammunition used is the 10mm round, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammo cap is 12. The test gun is a weapon which was cut from the vinyl version of the Fallout 3 DLC Operation Anchorage. The test gun is visually identical to the 10mm pistol. Due to its name and its nature as cut content, it can be assumed that the weapon was placed in the game files for developer testing purposes. Additionally, it's traits in the GEC lists the same flare effect as the grenade launcher, another cut weapon that we saw earlier in the video. And although it does use the 10mm rounds, physically you can see it shoots a grenade that does not explode. And if you do want to use this weapon in game, don't. It will crash your game severely. Next up we have the Tranquility Lane specific frag mine with a physical damage of 300, an explosive damage of 100, an AP cost of 35, an item health of 5, a value of 3,900 and a weight of 1. Now the Tranquility frag mine was cut from the final version of Fallout 3, more specifically cut from the final version of the Tranquility Lane simulation. The internal name of this weapon associates with the Tranquility Lane portion of the main quests, but there are no mines used there in the game. This mine was probably intended as an alternate method of murdering Mabel Henderson at Betty's command. This Tranquility Lane specific version inflicts 300 times as much physical damage. It is also much, much more valuable at 3,900 caps opposed to the standard 25 caps and for whatever reason weighs twice as much. If you click to put one mine down, it will throw a mine down and then two seconds later your hands will glitch and throw a second mine down. You can also get into a strange mine throwing rhythm and your character will throw a stream of infinite mines down on the ground. And with that, you can get some pretty damn cool effects. So not only does this weapon have the same explosive capabilities of a standard frag mine, but it throws two down for every one and you can get into a frag mine spewing glitch. Then on top of that, you are ninja starring frag mines into your enemies, destroying them instantly. This is actually an incredibly powerful weapon. Next we have the Tri-Beam Laser Rifle Demo. With a damage of 75, a DPS of 204.5, an AP cost of 23, an item health of 1000, a value of 1000 and a weight of 9. The ammunition used is the Microfusion Cell, ammo per shot is 1 and the ammo cap is 24. The demo version of the Tri-Beam Laser Rifle is cut content from Fallout 3 and is presumably left over from the game's E3 demo. It does 1 point less damage per shot and less than half the critical damage than the standard variant, but has a much higher critical chance percentage. It is not used anywhere in the game and is only accessible through the use of console commands, much like the demo version of the laser rifle. For this next weapon, we have the turret gun with a damage of 5, a DPS of 15, and a value of 140, a weight of 7. Ammunition used is the 5.56mm round, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 24. The turret gun is used by automated turrets, however, it is only used by ceiling mounted turret guns. All floor mounted turrets use the same shooting effect as a laser rifle. The turret gun is easily the lowest damaging weapon that uses the 5.56mm round, which is lucky for us the player as we take way less damage from these turrets. 
flying through the list. We have the Vertebrate Gun with a damage of 20, a DPS of 400, an item health of 3,000, a value of 6,040. Hmm, that's a weird value. A weight of 10, the ammunition used is the micro fusion cell, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammo capacity is 255. The Vertebrate Gun is used by Vertebrates that are in the Broken Steel DLC. The Vertebrate Gun shares the same skin and basically the same effect as a standard Gatling laser. The Vertebrate Gun, however, is much more powerful than the standard variant of the Gatling laser, and even noticeably more powerful than the unique Gatling laser vengeance. The standard Gatling laser has a damage of 8 and a DPS of 160, whereas the Vertebrate Gun has a damage of 20 and a DPS of 400. That's over double the power, and its ammunition capacity is also 15 ammunition greater than that of the standard Gatling laser. It is an absolutely brutal weapon that you do not want to get in the way of. Next up we have the Vertibird Missile Launcher with a damage of 20 and then plus a 150 explosion damage, DPS of 72, an item health of 100, a value of 500, weight of 20. Ammunition used is the missile, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is also 1. The Vertibird Missile Launcher is used by the Vertibirds that were introduced into the Broken Steel DLC. Although having a healthy 20 plus 150 explosive damage, they do have a very slow firing speed, so the DPS is reduced, sadly, down to 72. A Vertibird flying down at you with this thing equipped is just about as scary as a magpie swooping. Penultimately, we have Wanda with a damage of 12, a DPS of 96, an AP cost of 23, an item health of 450, a value of 500, a weight of 7, the ammunition used is the 5.56mm round, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 30. Wanda is a unique assault rifle that was cut from the final version of Fallout 3. Wanda has noticeably more damage and DPS than the standard assault rifle, it's about 50% more powerful than the standard version. Wanda also has an increased ammunition capacity, which is 30, compared to the standard version's ammunition capacity of 24. Wanda is worth 200 more caps than the standard assault rifle and it also has an item health of 450 compared to the standard's 300 item health. So it is a shame Wanda was cut from the game as it does seem to be an incredibly powerful upgrade from the standard assault rifle. I can only wonder what happened to it. And ultimately, we have Werner's Scoped 44 Magnum. With a damage of 35, a DPS of 78.8, an AP cost of 32, an item health of 400, a value of 300, a weight of 4. The ammunition used is the 44 Magnum round, ammo per shot is 1, and the ammunition capacity is 6. Werner's Scoped 44 Magnum is carried by Werner, who can be found in the DLC The Pit. Werner's Scoped 44 Magnum is identical physically to the standard Scoped 44 Magnum. It is also identical in stats to the standard version, apart from the fact that it has a significantly higher health. Yeah, pretty standard weapon. Werner can keep it. Werner cannot be killed, nor can he be pickpocketed. So Werner's scoped 44 Magnum cannot drop off him. I don't know why the developers designed him like this. Prepare yourselves for the worst whenever. I can only Werner why. And with that pun deserving of a death sentence, that does conclude our video on the unobtainable weapons in Fallout 3. Be sure to let me know in the comments which weapon was your favourite. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed the video. I hope you learnt something about weapons you didn't know existed or learnt some more about weapons that you did know existed and you'd only seen once or twice. As you can see on screen, there are other videos in this series, so please feel free to click them. I've made them for you and I would greatly appreciate it if you checked them out. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to leave a like. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know your favourite weapon and also the time of your favourite kill sequence in this video. Be sure to share this amongst your fellow vault dwellers and as always if you did enjoy this video and you would like to see videos similar to this one please subscribe. It helps me know people are interested in these type of videos and in the long run will result in more of them. Be sure to check out Twitter and Facebook both links are in the description. I'd like to thank you very much for watching and I will see you in a couple of seconds in the next video. I'll see you there. Goodbye.